Ah, uh, so uh, let me first thank the organizers for the kind invitation to this uh, nice place and this wonderful conference. Uh, my title is uh, here and I will try to discuss the interplay of many body localization and non-abelian continuous symmetries. Uh, this work was done in collaboration with Dima Abanin from Geneva University, Antonella Skardich, Skardikio, Tomasa Paralini, Rayat Panda, and Eugen Demler. Uh, and it was a great pleasure for me to, to work with those people. Uh, so uh, thanks to uh, the previous speakers, uh, I don't need to give a long introduction into many body localization. Many important aspects of phenomena were already discussed. Just let me show you a couple of, flight, uh, of slides uh, emphasizing uh, the important points for me, the points that will be particularly important for me in, in the sequel. Uh, so uh, the uh, problem of many body localization basically deals uh, with the uh, possible types uh, of the dynamical behavior of the system of isolated quantum systems. So uh, typical systems uh, that we know, uh, they formalize, uh, or at least believe to formalize, uh, in the course of their internal dynamics. Uh, which means that if we prepare some quantum system, some generic quantum system in some state, and then let it evolve, then the rest of the system, and then we focus on a small part of the system, then the rest of the system will serve as a thermal uh, for the small subsystem that uh, the density matrix, so, so at large times the subsystem, subsystem will be characterized by a density matrix that is essentially thermal. Yeah? Uh, and this is what uh, allows us to efficiently describe many properties of actually very complicated systems. Yeah, so that's equilibrium physics uh, relatively simple. Uh, the thermalizing uh, systems uh, have a number of properties in terms of their eigenstates. So uh, kind of sufficient condition for, for a system to exhibit uh, thermalization uh, is given by the so-called eigenstate thermalization hypothesis that basically uh, tells us that in order for the system to, to be ergodic, uh, and to establish eventually this thermal density matrix, uh, each eigenstate of the system uh, should be uh, uh, actually uh, by itself uh, should have uh, thermal properties with respect to the local observables. Uh, in particular, if I uh, consider the matrix element of the local operator in some state, and let me focus on just alpha equal to beta alpha and beta R2 eigens of the system, and that just, ju just the uh, uh, expectation value of any local observable uh, in such an eigenstate uh, is uh, just given by the thermal expectation value uh, at temperature dictated by the energy of this global state. Yeah? Uh, many body thermalizing systems exhibit Wigner Dyson level statistics as was discussed uh, all through the day to date uh, and uh, they are also can be characterized in terms of the uh, entanglement properties of their eigenstates and they exhibit a uh, volume law entanglement that uh, eventually gives rise to the thermodynamic entropy. <coughs> So uh, on the contrast, uh, the many body uh, localized quantum systems uh, fail to provide a thermal buff for their subsystems, such that in the course of the evolution, the density matrix of a small system doesn't relax to the Gibbs, a usual Gibbs answer. Uh, from a point of view of the properties of eigenfunctions, those systems show the breakdown of eigenstate thermalization hypothesis are characterized by the Poissonian level statistics. Uh, they, the eigenstates exhibit area law entanglement so that uh, these are very 
uh, weakly entangled states. Uh, uh, for, for me, uh, one, one interesting aspect is that, uh, at least phenomenologically, uh, many properties of such systems can be captured uh, by asserting that uh, those systems have uh, extensive number of local integrals of motion. And uh, l let me uh, uh, tell a bit more uh, about these local integrals of motion. So, prototypical example for uh, for the study of many body localization transition is just uh, a XXZ spin chain in a random field, or equivalently, just spinless fermions uh, interact in, in a random potential and interacting with on-site interaction. And uh, the statement about the existence uh, of the local integrals of motion uh, can be explained as follows. So. Uh, Given, uh, l let us first consider a Hamiltonian that is written completely in terms of the uh, Z components of spins, uh, so it doesn't have any internal dynamics. Uh, for, 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 for such a Hamiltonian, the eigenstate values of uh, SD. Uh, now, if we uh, add a bit of hopping, or spin flips on top, then the statement of many body localization and local integrals of motion is that one is able to introduce new operators, tau z, uh, that are integrals of motion and commute with the Hamiltonian, uh, such that the Hamiltonian, for example, can be expressed uh, only in terms of tau z's. Those operators actually involve uh, only the, uh, uh, s some limited number of uh, physical spin operators. Well, technically, this means that uh, if I compute, for example, commutator of tau z with any spin operator, Sx or Sz or that anything, yeah? so it will be some operator. And let me uh, just evaluate, for example, its norm, and this norm should decay exponentially uh, the distance between the tau and S operators. Yeah? Uh, so th 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 this picture... There is no translation invariant. So it's, uh, it's all strongly disordered system. Uh, no, no. Uh, so, so, uh, so I, I, uh, so, so, in, in, uh, no, no, so J runs over the whole system. Huh? Yes. It's in some sense full, fully integrable. Yeah? No, no. Uh, look, look. I, I imagine system of size L. Yeah? Just yes. So no, 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 no. It's symbolically written. They, they. Uh, le let me probably explain. So, uh, imagine you are given some system of length L just spin system, then you have two to the power L levels. All these energy levels can be formally always described. Uh, so, so each eigenstate can be described as uh, you can just label the eigenstates by L values of tau z. Uh, so that's that's clear, yeah. Uh, but but now uh, the, the the problem, the, the question is, uh, if you can choose such a label, such that the operator tau z uh, will be local or quasi-local with respect to the physical spins. 
Uh, this means that given the eigenstates of the system, so suppose you solve the system, you, you are given the eigenstates, you uh, design a set of operators tau z that just enumerate the possible eigenstates. Then you uh, design also operators tau x i that flip, that bring you from one state to another. These are some operators. And then what you do, you compute the, co uh, the commutator. Uh, for example, tau x i s x j. And this commutator, so you take the operator norm, and there you require that uh, the norm of this operator decays exponentially, uh, then i minus j goes to infinity. Yes. No, no. But, but, but this statement by itself is trivial. So in any system of two uh, of L spins, you will have these conserved quantities. So, so this will be so no local operator commuting with Hamiltonian yeah, or characterized by so typically in beta ansatz you have operators that have local density yeah. uh, so so le le let's probe Uh, so, uh, so, so in, in, in print, it's not guaranteed, yeah. So, but, but it's believed that it should be, so, for, for, for well, uh, it's believed for, for example, the in, in the works by Imbri, what he tries, he, he, he tries to, yes, 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 A and under special assumptions, yeah. Uh, <coughs> But, but, but okay, so that's the model of conventional MBL that will be important for me, at least on the level of a cotton. Huh? Uh, so uh, uh, he, here is a plan of my talk. So uh, I've already went through the introduction uh, and uh, now, now I will come to the uh, most important part uh, of my talk. So the Heisenberg spins chains characterized by the SU2 continuous symmetry. Uh, I will uh, then try to convince you that uh, you can come up uh, with the natural approximations to the states of this system in, in the limit of strong disorder and try to understand kind of uh, integrals of motion that are similar but different from the integrals of motion that exist in the conventional many-body localized space. Uh, I will then uh, uh, discuss uh, results of the exact diagonalization studies and uh, try to convince you that from the exact diagonalization uh, you are tempted to conclude that there is a phase transition between the ergodic phase, some very non-usual uh, non-ergodic phase. Uh, but finally, uh, I will uh, explain that probably this non-ergodic phase is unfortunately destroyed by the resonance process. Albeit this can happen only at a very long length scales and uh, in the long time limit. <coughs> so uh, uh, the, the central question of my talk is the interplay of symmetry and many body localization. And we know that symmetry is very important for thermodynamic phase transitions. That's it's a natural question uh, to ask uh, if apart from the uh, ergodic behavior, 
and conventional M MBL, uh, there are different types of uh, or different dynamical phases of matter that are uh, di dictated by symmetry, much like in the theory of uh, thermodynamic phase transitions. Uh, and indeed, uh, we know examples, and the symmetry plays an important role in MBL. Uh, for example, uh, in, in this system that uh, essentially is a uh, uh, in, uh, spin chain in transverse field, uh, slightly perturbed to be uh, non-integrable uh, and not represent free fermions, uh, the existence of additional Z2 symmetry uh, actually is known to give rise to two different many-body localized phases at strong disorder. So uh, uh, qualitatively, uh, you can understand th this by recalling that a uh, clean system at zero temperature actually can have a, a phase transition between paramagnetic state and ferromagnetic state at zero temperature. At finite temperature in one dimension, this phase transition is completely uh, washed out. However, in the presence of disorder, if you consider individual eigens, even highly excited eigenstates of the system, uh, the, the, the phase transition can survive. And there can be uh, two phases, one uh, many-body localized paramagnet and what was termed uh, Hilbert glass uh, by these gentlemen. Uh, now, uh, from the point of view of the structure of the integrals of motion, uh, the two phases uh, are slightly different in the sense that uh, the uh, paramagnetic phase uh, characterized by the set of uh, usual local integrals of motion, uh, the number of integrals of motion is just the size of the system, while uh, in the Hilbert glass phase what you have uh, you have L minus 1 integrals of motion that are actually not the values of, uh, kind of values of individual spins, but the orientation, so, so domain wall operators corresponding to neighboring spins, plus an additional integral of motion that knows about the full system and the parity of the state with respect to the symmetry. Uh, so uh, given that it's natural to, to consider other symmetries and this is the main object of my interest. So this is a Heisen spin chain with, without external magnetic field. There all the disorder is in the couplings. And I will assume that, uh, these couplings are, the, the disorder in couplings is strong. Uh, I will describe my particular model of disorder later. Uh, so such a model is known to, it was studied not so long ago, by Das Gupta, Ma, Fischer, and many other people. Uh, um, so I in the limit of, zero, uh, of, of low temperature. So uh, for example, it exhibits actually many uh, interesting properties. Uh, if you consider, uh, for example, the uh, antiferromagnetic spin, spin chains at uh, low temperatures, uh, their ground state uh, is what is termed the infinite randomness fixed point or random singlet fixed point. This is a state in which uh, spins uh, at arbitrary and random distances are uh, condensed, so to say, into singlet states. Uh, su such systems, they exhibit power law behavior of uh, specific heat at low temperatures, logarithmic entanglement in the ground state, many other interesting properties. Uh, also. Uh, from the point of view of experiments, uh, they are relevant for the uh, some non-organic polymer materials like uh, this metal uh, phosphinates. Uh, and also it's very re relevant in the context of the cold atom physics. Uh, but we are, however, interested in the uh, highly excited eigenstates at finite energy density. And let me first uh, convince you that uh, if I consider the limit of strong disorder, I still cannot hope to get conventional MBL phase characterized, for example, the area law entanglement of the eigenstates. And the reason for that is just very simple. It's a de de degeneracy of the states um, that is induced by the presence of symmetry. Indeed, let me consider uh, two, two 
systems uh, of some size of order L. Uh, and let me try to try to, to, to just connect these two subsystems by infinitesimally small Kalfman. Yeah? So in the conventional uh, MBL physics, if the coupling between two subsystems is, is infinitesimally small, so that it's even smaller than the many body level space in the two subsystem, it's a trivial procedure. I can construct the eigenstates of combined systems just as a product states of left half and right half, uh, which means that uh, these eigenstates will have uh, zero entanglement, yeah? Uh, or the, the, the miracle of MBL is that I I'm allowed to increase my coupling beyond the many particle level spacing and yet uh, still have finite entanglement, so area law. Uh, the situation with spin systems with my s symmetric model is uh, much worse because now I immediately understand that the uh, states of uh, left half and right half come as multiplets that are exactly degenerate. And then combining them by even infinitesimally small coupling, I will not form a product state. Uh, I will ra rather have to combine left half and the right half with Klebsch-Gordon coefficients. And now if you examine the structure of the Klebsch-Gordon coefficient, you will see that uh, the entanglement that you generate in this way is of the, of the order of the logarithm of the left uh, or right half of the system. So generically minimal one. But then for typical state of the system, the spin is proportional just to square root of the system size, which results in the entanglement that is at least logarithmic in the size of the system. So conventional MBL cannot exist in my system even at strong disorder. So what then actually happens? So and th th the first question is that uh, in conventional MBL, at very strong disorder, I have a very uh, good picture of eigenstates. They are essentially uh, just product states of spin up and spin down, dressed by some probably uh, virtual corrections. Yeah? So what is the corresponding picture here in the presence of SU2 symmetry? And the good answer, uh, good guess uh, for, for these approximate eigenstates is provided by what is called real space renormalization group. Uh, this, this is a procedure that, that is very simple. It works as follows. So let me assume that uh, the disorder in the system is extremely strong. Uh, in particular, I will be interested in the power law distributions of coupling uh, with exponent one minus alpha. So uh, small alpha means that uh, the disorder is strong in the sense that if I take two couplings, two neighboring couplings in the system and compute their ratio, uh, it's going to be much uh, different from one. So uh, at such strong disorder, what I can say is that uh, given a system, I can identify the strongest coupling in the system. And typically, the neighboring couplings will be small. So let me then. Uh, approximate the whole system first as a pair, just a pair of spins, and solve the corresponding eigenvalue problem. That is trivial. It's dictated by symmetry. Uh, then what I do, I just replace this strongly coupled system by uh, a single spin and continue uh, uh, the, the procedure. So uh, essentially, uh, the what real space renormalization group Thus, in this context, uh, it prescribes a way to fuse different elementary spins of the system and uh, provides me the approximate eigenfunction of an eigenstate in the form of the tree that actually describes in which order and to into which total spin I fuse my elementary spin. So uh, uh, formally, each node here can be understood as, uh, should be understood as a Klebsch-Gordon coefficient if I want to write these three states in, in terms of the uh, elementary spins. Uh, <coughs> uh, uh, so uh, from the point of view of the integrals of motion, uh, this system is quite different from conventional MBL because uh, essentially uh, 
the block spins that I form here, they label my approximate eigenfunctions and can actually be, with some reservations, understood as integrals of motion. Why, I'm, uh, why, I'm, why I'm talking about reservations, uh, it's actually because uh, if you run the strong disorder RG, then different uh, eigenstates of the system give rise to di structurally different trees. Yeah? Uh, sorry. Uh, so, so it's for modulus of J smaller than 1. So, so if you increase alpha, it becomes peaked at 1. So, so it's... No, no. So, so, so take, take alpha equal to 2, for example. It's 1 over j to the power minus 1. It's j. It's this way. So large alpha means that... <coughs> so... Uh, uh, so alpha is larger than zero, strictly larger than zero. Small alpha means strong disorder. Large alpha so means yes, yes. <laughs> uh, okay, fine. Uh, so uh, uh, nice property of uh, these three states uh, is that they uh, actually fulfill our expectations about the entanglement entropy uh, in the sense that uh, given a three state of some length d, so the total number of levels in this tree, you can rigorously show that uh, the uh, entropy is limited by the d times logarithm of two times uh, uh, of the size of the system. And uh, actually, typical, uh, uh, if you follow the uh, strong disorder renormalization group procedure, then you see that the typical uh, depth of the tree is just logarithmic in the system size. That's quite natural. Uh, it um, just means that the tree that you get is not very unbalanced. Yeah? So it's more or less balanced. Uh, and uh, uh, that allows us to conclude that the three states are not, uh, they, they are somewhat entangled, but not much. So the entanglement is limited by the logarithm, uh, squared logarithm of the system size. So for, uh, the, the, the details may depend uh, on the uh, precise tree structure, but uh, actually what uh, uh, simulations show is that typically uh, the uh, just typical value of the entanglement for, for a three state is logarithmic. Yes. No. So each tree just can be translated. So you put into each node Klebs Gordon coefficient, and that's that's a wave function. <laughs> so. Uh, that's very nice in the sense that uh, if we can trust strong disorder renormalization group and uh, like in conventional MBL, we know that, of course, uh, the product states are not exact eigenstates but are sufficiently close to the exact eigenstates at strong disorder. So if this is the case also in our system, such as the three states uh, are close to the exact eigenstates in some sense, uh, then it means that we have discovered a new dynamical phase of matter uh, that is characterized, for example, by non-area law, but, not, uh, but, but also not volume law entanglement in the eigenstates. And let me recall that I'm talking about highly excite, excited eigenstates of the system. So, but can we trust uh, the many body?
Uh, so, uh, so what, what, what do we observe? So, for strong disorder, uh, we observe that even for larger system sizes available in numerics, uh, the uh, number of three states that you need to superimpose remains of order unity, actually. So, probably two or three, uh, three states are enough to compose an eigenstates. An eigenstate of our Hamiltonian. Uh, for uh, uh, smaller disorder, for example, alpha equal to 1.2, uh, we need actually more uh, three states, but but uh, observe that the number that we have uh, is not very large either. Huh? So on on the other hand, uh, what what we see is that uh, the number of three states. Uh, needed to compose an eigenstate uh, actually grows with the size of the system. But it's not actually a problem because uh, we know that the similar thing uh, as was discussed by Gabriel actually happens in the conventional MBL also. So uh, the many body uh, localized uh, eigenstates can look fractal in the uh, Hilbert space. So, uh, so by, by itself, uh, what, what we observe here is not a problem. So, so far, uh, what we can tell is that, uh, of course, if we look on s uh, s uh, weak disorder, then we not only see that uh, the, uh, the, the participation ratio n grows, but, but also we observe that uh, it, j just the slope increases. Yeah? So probably from this picture alone, we could conclude that eventually for weak disorder, uh, we are going to, in, to, to, to an ergodic phase. Uh, while for strong disorder, okay, we can say nothing special. Yeah, so probably uh, eigenstates remain good approximations to eigenstates in the thermodynamic limit. Uh, we can also uh, test ETH, uh, diagonal component of ETH, and uh, let me just uh, show, uh, uh, just mention that uh, for strong disorder, uh, we observe strong breakdown of uh, ETH, meaning that the, uh, uh, the, 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 the eigenstate, uh, so me meaning that the uh, expectation value of the local coupling of two spins, so oper the, the product operator of two local spins, uh, does not uh, is not a smooth function of energy, and also dep actually depends on the particular eigenstate of the system that you choose. Uh, while for weak disorder, uh, we see the onset of MBL. There, uh, eventually, for sufficiently long systems, uh, the, um, the 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 the, the uh, value, the expectation value of this operator depends only on energy. Uh, and doesn't depend on the particular eigenstate, it's only some small fluctuations. Uh, <coughs> so uh, finally, uh, what we can study, uh, we can study the level statistics. And uh, here it is. So uh, this graph shows the uh, dependence uh, of this parameter, average value of this par usual parameter r, uh, that uh, depending on the, uh, uh, so th th that uh, for the systems exhibiting Wigner-Dyson statistics should approach 0 0.53, while uh, for Poisson uh, it should approach uh, 0 0.38 uh, in the long uh, system size limit. And let me uh, pay, uh, let me discuss this picture. So what, what do we see here? Uh, apparently, at uh, weak disorder, with the increase of the system size, we approach Wigner-Dyson statistics. Although, observe that uh, even for disorder that is not very weak, so it's alpha equal to 1 corresponds just to uniform distribution of j on 0 to 1. Yeah? Uh, for all available size of the system up to 24, we are actually quite far from the limiting value. 
uh, while uh, for sufficiently strong disorder, this picture suggests that eventually the fate of the system can be the localized fate with Poisson energy levels. Uh, so, and, and actually, uh, we have seen several pictures of this already uh, today, and just naively taking this picture, uh, we, we attempted to conclude that the system may exhibit a transition between ergodic and non-ergodic phase somewhere around alpha equal to 0 0.5. But the uh, true question uh, is that the uh, finite size scaling in uh, those many body localization problems uh, is extremely difficult and we would like to understand what actually happens with the system at large sizes. Uh, our strategy to approach uh, this problem uh, is somewhat similar to what this picture is. Yes? No, no, this is, this is exact diagonalization. Uh, uh, okay, uh, so, so uh, the, 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 the caption is means that uh, I'm trying to understand if the three levels, the three states have something to do uh, with the uh, true eigenstates of my system. No, no, so, so all the pictures that I was showing uh, it's just exact diagonalization <laughs> in the full Hilbert space. So, uh, okay. <laughs> so, so our strategy is to understand how much time do I have? Okay. Uh, so, uh, uh, our strategy is to understand the effective uh, hopping model uh, that describes uh, the hopping uh, of my system in Hilbert space in the basis that is predicted by the real space renormalization group. Uh, so uh, for to, to understand that, we, we actually need several ingredients. Uh, first of all, given a tree state predicted by disorder RG, we need to understand to how many uh, states uh, the action of Hamiltonian can bring us from a given state. And it's uh, the, the number of such states, so in, in other words, a uh, number of non-zero matrix elements between given three states and other three states is actually dictated by the uh, uh, SU2 symmetry that tells us that taking, for example, a product of two operators, say S1, S8 here, and applying it to, to, an, uh, to, to the tree state, what we can do, we can change the values of the block spins along the path connecting uh, S1 and S8, uh, and each block spin can be changed I either by plus minus one or zero. So this is analogous to the uh, selection rules in optics. Uh, in, in fact, uh, there are, there are many beautiful things uh, that emerge uh, in this matrix elements due to the presence of SU2 symmetry. Uh, as a side remark, let me just mention that, for example, taking a uh, completely regular tree, uh, you can analytically compute the distribution of matrix elements of the operator uh, uh, of the product of two local spins. Uh, and you can show that uh, this distribution uh, follows a log normal distribution and you can analytically find the scaling of the typical matrix elements. Unfortunately, this is not enough for our purpose because this is a toy model with regular tree and uh, we need to, uh, to, to work with the tree generated by the uh, strong disorder RG. And we also need to take the correlations between the into account the correlations between the tree and the actual Hamiltonian uh, that was injected into the real space RG. So, <coughs> because of that, we have to resort to, to just numerical analysis of the problem. And uh, first of all, uh, uh, we, we can understand uh, how many uh, non-zero matrix elements the Hamiltonian have 
that connects given tree state to another tree state, the number of uh, these matrix elements turns out that it scales uh, as a power law with the size of the system. It's actually uh, the, the fact that its power law follows immediately from, from the selection rules. Uh, the number that you get, uh, th th that we get, actually is a result of numerics, uh, but uh, uh, we, we, we can come up with a very simple model of trees that gives a very close number known analytically. Uh, so uh, out of the many matrix elements that um, our matrix Hamiltonian has, important for me are only the resonant transitions that connect different three states with the energy difference smaller than the matrix element. And the actual object of the, of the interest is not a total connectivity in the Hilbert space, but this kind of resonant connectivity. And uh, this picture shows the dependence of the average number of the resonance transitions ena enabled by the Hamiltonian as a function of the size of the system uh, for different disorder strengths and uh, for comparatively small systems. So what, what we see here uh, is that uh, with the growth of the length of the system, the number of resonances grows linearly. And this is what we actually expect also in conventional many-body localization physics, because uh, even at strong disorder, for sufficiently large system, uh, there, there is just small density of resonant sites that enable resonant transitions between different eigenstates in the product state basis. Yeah? So this is more or less what we observe here. Uh, again, from, from this, and you see that the slope of this curve, so the characteristic length that you need to take to have uh, one resonant transition is large for sufficiently strong disorder. Uh, however, the uh, difference to the case of um, conventional many-body localization comes then instead of small system sizes, uh, you can see the large systems. It turns out that in large systems, the number of resonance transitions grows as a power law with the exponent larger than one as the size of the system. And from, from this, we actually anticipate that the resonances that are enabled by Hamiltonian proliferate for the large systems and eventually destroy the tree-like eigenstates. Uh, apart from just the number of resonances, you can characterize them by the uh, typical matrix element, ty typical matrix element, uh, and the typical size. And what, what we observe that with the growing of the length of the system, the typical scale, energy scale of the resonance grows, and the typical size of the resonance grows, which means that l higher, larger and larger resonance, uh, resonances involved in m more and more spins actually come into play as you can see the system of larger and larger size. Uh, so uh, to characterize the proliferation of the resonances, uh, it's convenient to uh, describe uh, uh, the, the, the following thing. So you start uh, you start from some RG eigenstate, uh, you compute all the resonant transitions that, that are enabled by, by your Hamiltonian, and you mark all the block spins that are affected by such, a tra by, by such transitions. Then you follow uh, which of these block spins exist on your system at each stage of your real space linearization group. And you uh, plot the dependence of the, uh, uh, the, the, the density of the resonant spin block spins. Uh, how the density of the resonant block spins evolves in the course of, of, of the RG. So what we observe that uh, uh, the density of the spins uh, grows in the resonant spins, grows in the course of RG, and the longer is the initial uh, length of the system, the larger is the maximal density. We can thus expect that if uh, in the course of RG we develop some 
sufficiently large density of resonant spins, for example, 0 0.5, then our RG procedure just breaks down and uh, we are going into the thermal thermalized regime. So uh, operating in this term, we are able to estimate the length scale, the delocalization in our system happens, and also estimate the corresponding energy scale. So let me just in two sentences uh, summarize my result. So uh, considering the uh, eigenstate of my system for sufficiently strong disorder, we predict that in the systems uh, th there are several length scales. First, uh, there are lengths in sufficiently short systems. The trees are just perfectly good eigenstates of the system. There are no resonances that can destroy them. Then, uh, as the system size is increased, resonant transitions start to, to appear beyond some length scale L that depends on the disorder. And finally, at uh, even larger system sizes, uh, L organization, the ergodicity is established by the proliferation of the resonant transitions. So uh, this is my, these are my conclusions. Thank you.